All right, we, we've got our ladies with us. That's, that's going to be our next item right there. We'll be up back uh, and we'll have uh, Mayor Rusty Garnett come up and present these ladies. Uh, we've got Miss Carter County, Miss Watauga Valley. They are Miss Carter County 2019, Allie Morgan, and Miss Watauga Valley 2019, Annie Sandalovich. Close enough. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, you said it, I was going to say it. What? Say it for the third man. Oh, this car county, Mr. Montaga, I was going to tell you the story. Uh, a couple years ago, they asked me to be a judge in this, in the contest. And I mean, I didn't have a good luck. I told you this, me and another guy and several ladies, I said, I said, I always think, I think they're all going to be beautiful. I said, I can't vote something negative. They said, you just vote your own way. They said, we'll take care of the, the bad stuff. So they did, the ladies did. So I got to vote, I vote them all 10 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was a good guy. Those ladies, they, they know what to do. Uh, just want to read a little something. Every day there are people in our community who make a difference and strive to help others. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you uh, these two ladies, uh, fine individuals, Miss Carter County, 2019, Allie Morgan, and we'll talk about it in 2019 and Sandal Lovage. I've missed it up. Sandal Lovage. Sandal Lovage. I've been working on it all day long. I missed it down, Matthew. I had it down. He had it down 10 minutes before the meeting. The two, uh, these two exceptional young ladies are highly involved in community service as well as supporting the charitable causes. Next month, they will be representing our community in Jackson, Tennessee, as part of the Miss Tennessee Volunteer Pageant. As, as they will be representing Carter County, I feel it is fitting to name them as ambassadors of Carter County. Please help me in welcome Miss Carter County in 2019, and we'll talk about it in 2019. Association for Children of Addiction, 
And so um, I get to work with the Red Ribbon Foundation and kind of organizations like that to get the opportunity to speak in schools about staying drink free and the importance of it. Um, I'm a senior at East Tennessee State University. I'm majoring in human services. My ultimate goal is to be a guidance counselor or some sort of counselor, wherever God decides to place me. You never know. Um, but yeah, I'm super, super thankful to get to work specifically in this, uh, this area, in this county, because statistically the drug and alcohol abuse rate has risen 48% just in this county in the last 10 years. So super awesome to get to work with these kind of organizations in this area and just help make a difference. So thank you guys. I appreciate this very, very much. and presentation by my friends, uh, Keith Carter County Beautiful. We've got Ed Jordan and Ed Pasconi here. I know we've got uh, another member of Doug Dave Bald and Ed's lucky to buy Kathy with you. Well, while Ed's taking care of all of the technical stuff, I'll uh, take a few moments to thank you guys for having us tonight. As usual, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I'd like to thank body of county commissioners and the previous county commissioner for believing in Keith Carter County Beautiful and what we stand for and where we've been going in the last year, which will be presented in the update. I'd like to particularly thank some of the kids of our community that's been very helpful to us and uh, Danny's mind is very helpful and instrumental in helping this community clean up some major, major dump sites in the last couple of months. And we've got more on the books coming. So, uh, Hats off to him and taking his time away from away from his family and uh, on the weekends volunteering free time with, with his uh, co-workers and for free time to help them in the community all work together. I'd like also uh, I thank Chris for working real hard in the community cleaning up at the uh, the blight, old rundown houses and old trucks and and uh, road scrapers that's been left behind too. So all of that is a big help to the community, to beautify our community. And our ultimate goal is to bring in the uh, service, the tax dollars, the tax base, but the biggest thing is to protect our environment. Uh, so together we can all do this, but above and beyond, I would like to thank all the volunteers. We'll see the statistics in a few moments that has helped make Carter County beautiful, bring it towards that today and the momentum that we have in our community. We have a lot of folks in this community that, that's on the bandwagon. They really want to do, really want to clean up this community and stop this, this illegal dumping and, and also the littering. Uh, the littering we throw out of our car windows on our highways, uh, a bridge of fire here is ugly, but it also attracts a lot of life. There's a lot of roadkill out there because of our crazy littering, so we're just we're hurting our wildlife too. Um, to have a successful mission, and this is where we're going at this time, for all indentures to work together. We need to have enforcement. We've got to get enforcement out there to help bring these people that are deep dumping this illegal contamination, which we found on uh, in both dump sites, the, the, the tea berry and the blue hole. There were items that get into our water supply, and we found about we about 12, 15, five gallon cans of solvent up there that was seeping. And, and at that elevation, it goes into our water, into our drinking water. It seeps into our soil, it seeps into our water. We end up drinking it. But we've got to get better enforcement out there to bring these characters to justice so that the judge can take care of them. I think we've got some examples coming up. I applaud the judge. Thank you for that. Um, the government needs to work hand in hand. Uh, it's kind of like helping our neighbors. Trash rolls downhill. You know this old thing that uh, we're not living in a flat country here where people throw stuff out the windows or take it out into pickup trucks and throw mattresses and TVs. The side of our roads are usually about a half a foot wide, shoulder to a foot, maybe two foot. Where does it go? It rolls down into private property. We as a community, this is our problem. 
this is not just that private property owner's problem that he has to come in or she or they. It's all of our community, all of our, it's all our responsibility. We owe it to our citizens. The citizens owe it to us to work together in the region, to work together for the best solutions, and not be restricted by some rules and regulations that makes absolutely no sense in our environment and our terrain. So I challenge you guys and challenge our lawmakers to get this law changed so we can, if, if the county roads are used as a vehicle or as a means to throw trash out and rolls down the hill, it's county owned. It came from our county road. It needs to be cleaned up by our county. So one way or another, we're going to pay for this stuff. Either or. We need more law enforcement officers out there. We need to pay for it. If we need to get people down the side of the mountains, like we did at T-Berry, and off the blue hole with ropes, and hooks, and chains, to pull stuff up and out, that's what we need to do. But we need the government to get involved and not tell us five ways why they cannot do something that are this way is prohibited. Because this does not meet the common sense rule. And I was in the Army for 26 years, and we have what's called Army Regulations, ARs. But there comes a set, there comes a time at the point where there's an exception to policy. If it's stupid, we can do an exception to policy rule, and I think that's what we need to do in this community. Remember, years ago we used to have old barn raising, so people go out on Saturday night and build a barn for a family and have a big hoe down or cook out or whatever. Let's get back to that. Let's start working together to make this become a reality. And uh, the big thing, again, enforcement, government, and volunteers, we need to work together as a group. The chain, I'll leave you this thought, the chain is only weakest, it is the weakest word. The chain will fail at the weakest point. We've got to have that chain stick together. Without further ado, I'd like to turn this over to Ed Stoney. He's one of our board members, and he's our tech guru. So without said, Ed Stoney, it's yours, Ed. Again, I just want to thank you for letting us come here today. Uh, three things I want to talk about. One is litter index. And this is something that Keep Your Computer for requires before they will allow you to become an affiliate. And I'm going to talk about that. And then also some of our recent projects and just some plans we have for the future. Okay, just a little bit of history. What is Keep Car County Beautiful? Well, we're all volunteer organization with the objective of just making Carter County a more beautiful place to live and work. Uh, Ed Jordan's a founder and he's our current president. We have six directors and in 2018, last year, we became affiliate of Keep America Beautiful. Now, why are we doing this? I said we're all volunteers. Well, one, we live here. We work here. Our children live here. We hope they'll stay here. And we know that a clean environment encourages other things. A dirty environment includes more dirt and more debris and so forth. It's, I don't know if you've ever heard of the uh, broken window theory, that you've got an abandoned house and the window is broken and nothing's happened. Well, the next thing you know, you know, another window, another, and before you know it, the whole place is torn down and vandalism comes in. So it breeds bad things. You can keep a place up, you keep it clean, just the opposite happens. People tend to do that. And I don't know if you remember about a year or so ago, there was a group that came here from Knoxville, and uh, there was a consultant group, and they were advising the county on ways to try to improve the tourism. They said something I'll never forget. They said, Carter County has what money can't buy, and that's our natural beauty. We owe it to ourselves and future generations to take care of it. Uh, and another thing we really want to do, and I think we're having success, is just kind of bring awareness to the problem and just uh, show how actions affect just a very few people affects everyone. I think most people in our county do a fantastic job and they care about the county. They want to live here, they want to take care of it. But you have a small group, you're going to see some pictures in a minute, the damage that those, those small group can do to the entire environment. Uh, and as Ed said, we want to make it inviting for tourists new business, and also uh, we want to encourage recycling, uh, which uh, really helps our landfill. Okay, so last year I said we became a uh, member of uh, 
Keep America Beautiful. And as part of that, part of their affiliation process, is that they have, they require you to do a litter index study. And what this entails is driving around the county with a score sheet and marking, you know, where are you? It's like forming a baseline. And this is their uh, criteria. There's four levels, one, two, three, and four. One is absolutely no litter or just a very minimal amount. And typically what they want you to do is drive a two-mile stretch to kind of average it over that two miles. So don't just drive one place and look at it. So, and you took, pick roads throughout the county. So that's what we did. And the way we decided to go about this is we broke the county up in the eight uh, voting districts. And then we predetermined the routes we would go on. And we came up with score sheets. And then we drove those routes back in September of last year, and we scored these uh, routes that we had uh, looked at. So this is a typical score sheet. And myself and Doc Fibble, we, we did this one. We picked 10 sites. This was in voting district number four. And we had our starting location and our ending location identified. Because a year from now, we want to go back and we want to do it again to kind of measure, we're getting better, get worse, and see how things have changed. So we marked our scores, one, two, three, or four, and then uh, we brought that back and we, we submitted it. And this is a summary of how the eight districts did. So at the top, you see the eight districts. Down here on the uh, left side, you see the score, one, two, three, or four. So one is, is best, uh, four is bad. You don't want four. Uh, so you can see, like district number one, they scored eight uh, ones and only one, two, and one, three. That's pretty good. So you can look across here and you can see the worst districts was district, district three and district five. Now, myself and Ed Jordan, we were in district five. And <laughs> some other people. And, and one key site here is the Millican Highway. And if you drive down the Millican Highway, we'll clean it up, and two weeks later, there's a litter everywhere. And we thought, or I thought, the whole county was like this. And when I drove to other districts, I was pleasantly surprised it was. And I'm very happy with it. Okay? Uh, so, and although it doesn't seem like a lot, between 1.3 and 2.3, it's a lot. Because 1.3 is just a little litter, maybe every half mile you'll see one or two pieces. And level three is you can't go 50 feet without seeing three pieces of bottles, cans, plastic, whatever. So it makes a big difference. So looking at that on the map, you can see how the county uh, district scored. So you can see uh, District 5 and District 3 were the worst, and uh, some of the other green were 1.3. So we would love to have every district uh, one or below. Okay, so that's the litter index survey that we did. And we just wanted to share that with you because a lot of work went into it. We had to submit that to Keep America Beautiful as a baseline, and we just think that's worth sharing with you. So now here's a few of the key results we've had recently. So this is a scorecard that they also require we keep. So the number of events we've done since June of last year until uh, yesterday uh, it was 19 events, but we've involved 368 uh, volunteers for over, just over 1,000, almost 1,100 hours of people volunteer efforts. And the national average for a volunteer hour is $24.69. So if you take those hours and multiply it by $24.69, the impact that those volunteers have had is over $27,000. Uh, and the amount of litter that we collected is over 10 tons. That is hard to believe. 10 tons of litter that has been collected. We planted four trees, some of them that were done this past Saturday, and uh, shrubbery as well. Ed, can I say something? Uh, on, on the, uh, you make the last chart, on the $27,085, that's what, this would cost this county to hire somebody to go out there and clean it up. So that's how much money we've saved the county, but not we, the volunteers that have saved this community. Thank you.
And I just want to say something, you know, even though we picked up nearly 10 tons of trash, that is not our mission. Our goal is not to go around cleaning up trash. There's no one wants to do that. I can guarantee you, those of you that have done it, that's nasty, dirty work. Uh, our goal is, number one, is to help people have the pride that they don't want to do this. Take pride in your community where you live. Number two, educate. To show them this is the impact, you know, it's happening. And number three, if they still don't get it, enforce it. And Judge Bowers is starting to do some of that, and I think all that working together, we're going to see the difference. Ed, you might mention the uh, 17,500 pounds, that 21,000 came from one That's correct. 17,000 pounds came off of T-Berry on that set. Uh, so these are some of the things that we've been involved with recently. Uh, we, the blue hole uh, cleanup is occurred, the litter picked up, the Tweetsie Trail cleanup day, and I'll show you some pictures of some of these. Of course, the T-Berry Road, we got a lot of publicity. Last Saturday, we did a beautification project on the Tweetsie Trail. I don't know if you've driven past uh, the trail there at Sycamore Shoals, but the bench is here, there's trees, shrubbery that was planted that was past Saturday. Also, uh, we received a uh, Coca-Cola recycling bin grant, uh, which was equivalent to four, over $4,000 of these portable recycling uh, containers. They gave us 35 of those, enough bags for about five years of uh, use. And we're trying to, right now we're working to work with the schools, Elizabeth and Twins, City of uh, Elizabeth, to get these set up in festivals, uh, car games and things like that where we can uh, collect these recyclables, primarily plastic and aluminum, and just keep them out of the landfill. You know, our landfill is getting full. We're going to have to pay to have another one, plus keep the old going. So anything we can do to uh, keep that stuff out of the landfill is going to help us all out. And then also, we just recently received uh, 800 of reusable grocery bags, which you received tonight, and we've distributed about a quarter of that. But uh, that will encourage people to use those instead of plastic. So here's some of the uh, photographs from some of the events. Um, that was Blue Hole uh, a few months ago. And I mean, it is just unbelievable how people will just take any place they choose, whether it's private property, forest pro national forest property, or city or public property, and turn it into a landfill. Couches, TVs, uh, tires, anything you can imagine is there. And this is a T-Berry Road. Um, over 10 containers, it was close to 15 of these solids. I don't know what was in it, but a lot of them had leaked out down the, the valley, and uh, it was nasty smelling. Look at all the tires. You could have literally uh, refurnished the house with used furniture. There's your closet up there, we have a refrigerator, we have couches, uh, TVs. In the circle there are two televisions. They're in a stream. The water is running right through the sewer. Now the problem with that is TVs are made with lead solid. Lead is a very soluble metal. In other words, it dissolves the water pretty easily. That water picks up the lead in the TVs flows down the stream and not a quarter of a mile down there are cows in there drinking the water. Okay? What do you think happens to the cows? They absorb the lead. We eat the beef. That's how the lead gets in our bodies. So a lot of bad things uh, that why we don't want this stuff going on. Uh, this was the earlier on April 13th. We did a cleanup from uh, Lions Field down to the high school uh, trail. And then, like I said, just this Saturday, we uh, uh, we did beautification around the benches there across from Sycamore Shoals. Uh, so here's a few of our uh, coming actions, and we're slowing down a little bit there in the summer as people will be gone and so forth. Uh, we have a meeting once a month. Uh, we've got another letter to pick up along the Milligan Highway schedule for the 13th of July. Uh, we are working, like I said, with various organizations trying to get these recycling bins out uh, and uh, start collecting things that we can recycle. 
Uh, we plan to recognize on our website some local businesses and uh, restaurants that are beginning to switch uh, from plastic straws, which are typically not recyclable, to paper straws, paper bags, and things like that. We just want to let people know, you know, what's going on. We're also going to continue distributing the local uh, grocery bags and local bags, and we're coming up with a detail that, uh, again, will bring awareness of uh, the need to take care of our county. Uh, this was designed by one of our board members, and um, with the help of uh, Mr. Garland here, uh, TDOT, I think, is going to pick up the tab form. And uh, we'll be giving these uh, to businesses and individuals to put on the bumper sticker, again, to just bring the awareness of the need of what we have here, what money can't buy, and our need to take care of it. That's all I have for you. Any questions? These uh, poly bags appear to be polyethylene, recycled from uh, number two plastic. Could be uh, leader bottles, uh, milk jugs, but uh, I'd, I'd say that they are recycled, Alan, recycled material, or they wouldn't have. Yes, you know, those were provided by Tennessee Beautiful. I think a great use for those as well, which you can take them to the grocery store with you instead of take those in with you instead of getting the plastic bags paper bags, whatever, it's something reusable you can continue to use over and over if you can protect it. It's great. I mean, I, I work with these guys side by side regular, and uh, just a great group. Uh, really, it's team building exercise. And like it said, it's no fun to go out there and pick up trash, and that's not really what we're for. But uh, just the awareness and education of this organization, we thank uh, the press and the star for, you know, some of the coverage, and of course, WJG and WCYB for really, uh, advertising this stuff and broadcasting it and situations we do have going on. So we appreciate their work big time. We need to support them and thank them for what they do. So thank you guys. All right, that gets us to the uh, Secure Inmate Communications Contract. And Captain Smith, you want to speak on that? Or just come on. You don't have to. It's been provided in the packet if you want to give a brief over. Well, I hope everybody's had a chance to look over and uh, see what the uh, benefits we like I worked for about four months with Securus on this. And I'm pretty sure my picture is hanging in the CEO's office with Darcy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you got any questions about the contract, I'll be glad to answer. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I make the most we accept this contract. Motion to accept by Mr. Trevor and Mr. Jaynes. Any discussion on the matter? I will say there's no, no renewal fee or anything like that. It's just, just no cost right there. So, but we thank you, Captain Smith, and in your office for, for pursuing, pursuing this. And, and I know the contract said uh, a lot of stuff in there to make it safer and, and better ways of communication. So we thank you for that. We've got a motion on the floor. If you would call it over, please. It's done. We need a better.
next item consideration of interlocal agreement with Beverly Carter County, JBCDB. Mr. Carter, speak on this. Basically, there was an interlocal agreement adopted in 2016 that established uh, the current Joint Economic and Community Development Board. We have to have this board uh, in order to uh, receive grant funding and things like that. Uh, the, the original board was established, uh, has to have Carter County, has to have all the cities within Carter County or anybody that has portions, so it has Johnson City and it has Watauga and Elizabeth. Uh, the original version uh, was passed simply to have compliance with the state and it has zero budget, zero funding. Uh, basically, the, the board was just a, you had to meet quarterly and that was it. Uh, there's proposed changes to the board uh, to add additional members uh, to actually uh, they have incorporated the board with the state. We've got you know tax identification number that kind of stuff. So the board is working more and more toward actually being an economic and community development board instead of just a rubber stamp, essentially. So uh, the proposed changes are for the operation of the board as incorporated now. Uh, this has to be approved again by us here in Carter County, uh, all the uh, entities, Elizabeth and Watauga, Johnson City. Watauga approved it last week. Uh, I believe this is the second meeting to come up, and I've, I've disseminated it to Elizabeth and Johnson City. So I anticipate that all uh, entities will approve, and this will be the next step in, in making this board viable. I'll answer any questions. Any questions? Attorney Hart. I know that this is required by our law for us to receive grants from the state. It also gives a purpose to the board which says implement strategies to increase economic development in Carter County. Here before, we had had uh, an individual in the mayor's office who had an economic development certificate from the University of Tennessee. Uh, we've also used John Harmony uh, as, as part of, of the city effort in this. And they work together, sometimes better than others, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, my concern uh, with, and maybe the mayor can answer this as well, uh, what person are they going to pick to represent the county's interest and implement the plans uh, that this particular board comes up with? Well, I'll let the mayor address it. As, an but as this board stands, I mean, there would be a representation, of course, from the mayor, and then uh, two additional members of this body who would be appointed to that board. And that would be our representation on the actual board. But as far as implementing it uh, daily at, at the county offices, I'll let the mayor answer that question. Really, all this board would be doing would be kind of govern, govern it. Uh, we won't have somebody to run it. Uh, the lady that's up there now, uh, she, she, she could run it. I mean, we, it's, a, it's up to us once we get it, if we want, if we want to keep her on. I mean, she, could, she could run it. We've got three people, uh, the lady that runs it, and the two maintenance people. And uh, all we've been doing is just be uh, government. Uh, but I, we were going to we plan on putting in the plan, so I don't know how that's going to work out. But, uh, I, he's asking more about the day-to-day -day implementation of economic health, not anything to do with the workforce development center. Maybe like who would pursue grants or I mean, who's yeah. actually looking out, re reaching out to maybe make in their, our network to provide well, I don't, think, I don't think it just come from the mayor's office, so let's, you know, let's, let's not come from the mayor's office. But uh, still, again, I was looking, I was looking at planning, uh, talk about writing grants, I mean, which that's a, you know. I think, I think this business commission put some of those uh, responsibilities on, on Director Schuler. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think those are negotiable at the moment since his budget is coming back uh, to the planning commission. So as of now, the only indication it seems would be that office, unless there's another approach to that. Well, I think the point is that we are you know, all in favor of this, certainly, because it's not a state mandated, but there needs to be, as the mayor has said, uh, as we all have said, communication between a number of entities to make this happen. I'm a, my only concern is if it isn't in the planning office, if it isn't done by Director Schubert, 
we're going to have to find somebody to pick up the pieces once the board says we want this done, or we would like to do this, implement this program, or what about that idea, or what about this grant? So I think that's something the commission needs to be thinking about uh, in working with this with this board as as it's reconstituted and, and becomes what it really needs to be. With the and it's certainly something to, to consider with uh, negotiating the planning department's budget, which you know we put this you know, thought about putting it on net revenue. We're talking about defunding, you know, a half there what we had funded before, and we want to move this county forward with economic development, you know, jobs, businesses, things like that. And we're talking about taking money away from people. So that's something that we need to consider soon before any any budget is passed for 19 and 20. Mr. Hill. How many meetings have not been able to be had due to lack of quorum present on this in a local? Uh, this, this couple, it's two or three, yes. Two or three? Yeah. And this is May. That's been back, it's been back a while back. Mm -hmm. But the last, the last two or three meetings we've had, uh, we had uh, one every time. So that's the reason we want to add our people. Uh, we're going to add two from the city council, that's our recommendation, add two from the city council. Add two from our board here, and my recommendation is going to be the two that we have on this uh, car town tomorrow. What the commission just called the mission would be. Uh, that's my recommendation. And Mr. Bonkan's already on it. Uh, you know, so it puts up to 15, and you know, if we can't get eight out of the 15 that we have, then we're going to have problems. As I recall, that was a chronic problem with the Carter County Tomorrow organization and its, score, its former entity or former incarnation was that uh, they frequently had not enough people to even have a meeting and conduct business. No, that was, a, that was the last joint economic development from their last administration in the mayor's office. That was not first half the month. And in speaking with some of the people who were on the board after the last election, there was some discommunication where people who went out of office hadn't told the people coming in to replace them that, hey, by the way, you're on this board.
hopefully the ability to implement some things to, to economically develop the, the county. But that's the goal of it. And if Carter County tomorrow does dissolve, if they choose to do that, then this would be the only entity in the county basically pursuing that. Anything else? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a, a motion to approve this, this contract. Second. Second. By Dr. Acuff. Motion by Dr. Acuff. Who was that second? Mm -hmm. Mr. Frazier. More discussion. Call the vote, please. Mr. Chairman, you appreciate the motion. The, the motion is to approve this, this contract as written. And form the joint JE. <laughs> It's an interlocal agreement for, yes, for operating the, uh, the incorporated joint economic community building. Yes, I guess to clarify that, that's, it's not a, a contract, it's just an agreement. All eyes, motion carries. Thank you. Brady Harden, everyone, for their work on this. <coughs> uh, next item, Mayor, you're up again, sir. I've been 
much same way. I mean, he, he seemed harmless. You, know, you don't know. So anyway, he had a toy gun waving around. So I just thought it would be best to not come around. So if you get a complaint, that was me because uh, wrong people see him waving a gun around, he could got hurt. Or he could come in next time with a real gun. So anyway, uh, that's the last thing I had. I, st I stand by what decision I made is uh, convince me otherwise it's, it's not safe. Uh, you know, we don't want to scare the people up. Our, our people got to feel safe. You don't know, just or not. Yeah. So, well, we thank you for that. I think you certainly made the right choice, Mayor. I mean, for all of our offices and the people, the customers walking in here every day, that no any threat like that should ever be taken lightly at all. If it's a oh, yeah. Product, so. And like I said, one of our officers did, that didn't know him. That's next in line. <clears throat> Before I come down for budget report, I think we need to I will link, relinquish this position and we need to take a nomination for the floor just as I give that budget report in case of tiebreaker or anything like that to uh, somebody fill this, this position at right, this time. So I'll open the floor for nominations. It's, I mean, it's, it would be brief, but you know, it's, that's up to you if you want to accept it or not. I would like to decline that nomination. Okay. I'm nominating Mr. Von Cannon. Yeah. Yeah. You got a nomination for Charles Von Cannon? This would be? I'd like to nominate my player. Nomination for Mr. Grounstaff? Larry Von Cannon. There's no need, we don't have to have a second on that, but, to, but thank you. Make a motion, though. All right. Okay, we got a motion on the floor, but Mr. Uh, Mr. Campbell ceased nominations with your second. Second by Mr. Frazier. A discussion on that real quick. No, call the vote, please. Call the vote. And this is just to, to close. Is this the way Yeah, ceased nominations. The motion right here is to cease nominations. What's your vote? All eyes, nominations have ceased. <clears throat> we have uh, Mr. Charles Montana and uh, Mr. Isaiah Grindstaff. And if uh, the clerk will call the roll, just, just uh, recognize in a voice vote, please. Mark Clemens. Mark
Coming out of that, I think this, what do you say on that? I mean, it should get us in the right direction, should it? Right. If it's approved or not, then we can start the group meetings and individual meetings uh, at the first of June. With the July 1, 2019 effective date. If we approve which one would decide about the alternative, or has the alternative plans of water, if we approve that, then they can go ahead and start the meeting. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah, if not, that's why they'll start in July, correct? Because we'll have to wait till August, I assume. We'll have to wait till August, I assume, and our current plan uh, runs out in the June. Do you recommend this, Brad? I do. Commissioner Hill. Chairman, will this also go with the, the recommendation of moving the Delta deal as well? Uh, I mean, that, that's that's not the motion here, but uh, I mean, it could be amended to do that. I think it was suggested. Uh, sound like when she said the Cadillac of dental insurances. So, would you be willing to accept that? I'd accept that as, as a, an amendment to the motion. A friendly amendment, yes, I'll accept that. Well, my question is, Art, what you're saying is you're going with the recommendation? Because that's not the way I read but the statement here in the minutes. Are we going with the recommendations for the three options that she gave tonight? Yeah, well, I mean, I, my understanding was just to approve Blue Cross and Blue Shield to move forward with that, but yeah, I think that includes the. We didn't the, have the information about it. But that's why I was asking it. We didn't have change. It was not a pre mature budget, I think. Well, we need to have another amendment to go with the recommendation. Yes, sir, we will. Another amendment. <laughs> <laughs> to go, sir. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I don't know that it's necessary to pick a carrier. We've already chosen a uh, broker with the Sequoia Group. I think the motion would be in order to go with their suggestions. They are brokering for, on our behalf. And uh, in doing that, obviously, she's already laid out three plans, our current one and two others for family option, et cetera. But, you know, I, I think that's that's her recommendation and I would recommend that we accept their recommendation. I think that's what the motion should do. Yeah. Well, I can go with I can withdraw mine. Let's see what you have to say. Michael. I think it's reckless to choose at this point. Um, Kelly, Kelly? Yeah, yeah right. here. Right. Did state that they were still pitting them against each other, and they were going to continue to negotiate up to the the last minute. And it does weaken our position. I don't know if anything would be gained from well, it or not. I think, of course, my understanding, if we were to have to go with Cigna or anybody else, they weren't going to offer the, the three options as Correct. far as for, for the, the multiple plans. So I think that would be the right move to move across, so we could get that for our employees. I think that was the main idea. I believe so, the motion should be to go with our new broker's recommendation, whatever that ends up being, and leave it somewhat generic, to leave them some negotiating room if there is anything left to negotiate. After speaking to the county attorney, I think that he kind of agrees uh, that the motion that was given in budget, um, even though it was a well thought of motion, since the more information we have now with those recommendations from them, um, you know, it's <coughs> look like it needs to be a second motion to follow their recommendations that is the way that we can go. Plus that would make the, uh, the total motion clearer uh, with going with their recommendations. <coughs> That's what we can design. Okay, so we need two motions then? Or we just one single motion to take <coughs> Yeah, I will withdraw my, the first motion to go with Blue Cross Blue Shield and, and the Freely Amendments uh, and withdraw that one. I will put the form of a motion to go with the recommendation of our broker. So I will set that out. Okay, get the recommendation by Ross and I believe I heard Mike uh, heal with the same. Any further discussion? Is everybody clear on what the motion is? All right, ma'am. All right.
Okay, next item, and I'll put the form of a motion to approve the transfer of two vehicles, uh, military, I think they're Humvees actually, from the Sheriff's Department. One out of each. Uh, the county employees not need to stand on this. Okay, because they're going to be the argument could be made that it is increasing your benefits. So, I mean, if you're going to stop it before we move on to the next thing, then yes, I think so. I think we need to have a recall. Or this. Yeah, I would, I would agree, but uh, if we had got to the next vote on the next time, it'd be too late, but we didn't. So, I would. Uh, no, it's good. Well, all right. Do you want to read? Wipe this vote out right here and vote again with county employees taking it into consideration. Possibly a mistake. Yeah, so for the record, I would say that, that that vote was challenged, and so we'll re vote. Right. You it's right. Yeah, we'll take it back later. We were just going off on the information that was given during the budget meeting, so it was a little bit different due to the circumstances. So, uh, anybody want to remake that motion? I think you just take the new vote. All right, ma'am, go ahead and call
next item, I'll put in the form of a motion to approve solid waste and sanitation fund 116, amendment six, two items, a total of 35,886 and 60 cents, uh, two items, 4,258 coming from unassigned fund balance. Second. Got a motion, uh, Austin James first, with a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call it the roll. Next item, I'll put the form of a motion to approve the Drug Control Fund 122, Amendment 7, one item, a total of $742.60. Nothing for the fund balance. Second. I've got a motion, and Mr. Aaron Frazier with the same. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call the Uh, next item, <clears throat> excuse me, a motion to approve the monetary 
1174-4260 and the Carter County School System, $500. Second. Ratification of the first thing in West Kelly's got the second. Any discussion? Seeing none, call
just <laughs> kind of on seat. I guess you know because I'm worried. Right. <laughs> Secretary of Budget. <laughs> <don't want> <laughs> so Carl is ahead of yeah. well, I mean, we'll, we'll work as quick as we can, hopefully find that position, uh, you know, or maybe even just temporarily, you know, for now. But it would be great to get to, uh, you know, meetings coming up and be right around the corner, unfortunately. So uh, we'll work on that. I'll, I'll talk to Miss Goose, see what she's got on her mind. We'll, uh, we'll work on it to get that taken care of. But we do thank Susie. She did a great job for us. And, uh, just moving on. So, anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Isaiah.
creative problems. This is not the first time this has come back. Of course, school being out now, you've got a three month, a couple three months reprieve from the problem of the this problem. Deep in. One of the dump sites that was cleaned up by the volunteers. I think we need to help them. The car got a crowd group by each person identifying, each of the commissioners identifying hot spots in your district. Uh, especially, uh, and I'm asking that maybe the road committee meeting at our next meeting, see what you can find in your district. It shouldn't be hard. I already know what's going on with the third, and the third surprised me as being uh, by the survey that was conducted by the group at 2.3. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. If it's as bad as Oklahoma Road, then I'd agree with it, because that is probably as bad as any in the county. The, uh, T Bear thing went, went on quite a ways in the amount of time. We went all the way from closing, uh, attempting to close the road, which uh, was reported by one of the commissioners. And, uh, and then when his guy said he didn't want the road closed, he had to change his you know, direction a little bit. The guy that owned the land on both sides. So, as it turned out, we had a watered down solution, but it was a solution. And the sheriff uh, was part of this solution. The reason the road couldn't be closed is to be very simple. It's, there is a, an annotated law on the state books. Uh, the 1982 Uniform Highway Department Manual states that simply this, if a road has been used by the public for 20 years continuously, you cannot close it. Uh, that, even, that even includes a path across your property. If, if a path has been used by the public for that amount of years, you can't close that. So uh, that ended that. Here's, here's what the motion was. Oh, sorry. Uh, Nancy Brown, seconded by Ginger Hall, recommended to the full commission and with an amendment from Gary Bailey that the that the uh, Health and Welfare Committee also be involved in getting the law enforcement become more engaged in this matter as enforcement is the key. And the sheriff's gone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, there was a uh, I make that in a form of motion because that's what the committee is working on. And Mike, are you Discussing, or are you uh, second? I'm seconding your motion, sir. Okay, thank you. Enforcement is key. So the motion is that that the law enforcement, health and welfare, health and welfare was added because of uh, environmental problems that, and syringes and things that may have been there. And believe me, don't ever pick up a bag of garbage without gloves. I did it once. And still survive. Charlie, the same motion. Let's vote on this motion. Let's see what we got. That's the motion. What well, exactly was it? I'm not following along. Please restate the full motion in its entirety. With, no, we didn't add it. Next person. <laughs> All right. Well, the motion was to recommend to the full commission and the law enforcement committee that the law enforcement in the matter of enforcement, which is the key issue. And Gary
anybody the amended motion to include health and welfare committee because of environmental and health reasons. Okay, we got a motion on the floor by Mr. Bonkamp, second by Mr. Hill. Okay. Discussion? Okay. Yes, and, please. And that, that was supposed to have had in it that to leave the road open and that the county could not make any could not make any uh, follow any problems towards Mr. Forbes because of Duncan because it was a known side. The motion is on page two of the minutes of the highway department. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Exactly. If, if, I think if, if Patsy is the record stated that the accurate in these minutes was just want to make sure that it I can read it off. That's it. Yeah, I've got it here. So uh, let me read this out loud. Motion made by Nancy Brown, second by Ginger Hollander, recommend to the full commission the law enforcement committee become more engaged in this matter as enforcement was the key issue. Gary Bailey amended the motion to also include the health and welfare committee. Is that okay? That's our motion. If we're in discussion now. Yes. In the health and welfare committee minutes, the uh, the Tennessee code annotated that pertains to illegal dumping is is printed here. Uh, so enforcement of the law is written. I think is what I was really going down in my way. All right, Mr. Aiken. Uh, friendly amendment, Commissioner uh, Bonham, to add landfill to that. We had a discussion in health and welfare, and there are issues of preventing providing um, uh, dumpsters, uh, and what it constitutes, what is allowable by state law, uh, and who can use those dumpsters. So I'd like to offer up that we also include, include landfill in that discussion. All right. We'll leave that up to Mr. Bob Cannon to accept that. Yeah. To Add landfill committee to to the motion, please. Anything else? When you say more engaged, what what's that mean for all these committees? I don't know if they should they're reaching out to the sheriff's department or, or looking for more enforcement avenues to Mr. Hill. There, there's definitely an enforcement component to this that's very necessary. Also, we need to define illegal dump site somewhat similar to how Washington County Sheriff Ed Grayville defines illegal roadside dump site uh, because their litter grant team is able to uh, actually square away some of the problems a little more effectively than our guys are right now due to the restrictions of the interpretations of the various laws. But there, there are a few things that need to happen in this workshop or joint committee meeting and, and those are the two biggies, and also a policy on on uh, use of the landfill tubs so that there aren't any problems that, like uh, Trout Unlimited just cleaned up the riverways and Parks and Rec coughed up three, four hundred dollars for a, a dumpster rental because the policy abruptly changed and they had had this thing planned for, for several, several weeks in advance. Does that help? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it sure does, Mr. Bailey. In, in short, I think what's going on here, what people could understand is, all right, they're bringing it to the Highway Committee. The Highway Committee builds high, I mean, it's the roads. They ain't nothing to do with the landfill part. And, but there's no like rules but to set illegal. If they get caught, what's the fine? I mean, we need something more, the Sheriff's Department, really, enforce more because you can go through all these committees but to do what yeah. i mean what do they want us all to do but, i mean they go to the highway but the highway builds roads i mean features the roads it, it's going around in a flipping circle here it's it coming back to really somebody gets caught I basically i think we're asking for the fine to be where they realize they get caught it's going to be extreme enough to where they're in trouble not yeah. smacked on the wrist and sent home and well i'll throw it out again you know if you throw it out and the fines 50 bucks and it costs you 60 to go to landfill you're gonna throw it out 
Sure. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, we've got to get something turned around here where it costs you more for the fine than would have been to take it to the landfill. So I don't know how we send this to the committees. I mean, we all know what's going on. We've seen Ed Jordan here. Everything is just, the sheriff walked out and it's, the thing is, we need some kind of a fine that's, I don't know really yeah, what I'm asking. It's just going around in a circle. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Well, we can. Yeah. State laws. State laws. Yeah. State laws. Okay. 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 Okay.
variation on the profits. Therefore, the, uh, what they did find out is the legislature passed, finally passed the, uh, the authorization to put signs up. And what they didn't tell us, though, was that they changed the law or whatever, and now it takes $300. But I am paying the $300 before Sarah Seller dies. We've got to get this thing going. Uh, I wouldn't get a vote on that, though. No. And that is State Highway that you're talking about, right? State Highway. Yeah. Yeah. So we have no decision on that. But thank you for pursuing that. They are a great family. And so if you're still in. Okay. Uh, financial management. We will spend on our minutes unless anybody has a question or suggestion on your thing. I just want to thank you again for your work on uh, this broker. I think it's going to pay off, pay off for the county. We appreciate the hard work. I think Mr. Neal did have a question. I remember you had in there that we're going to push for the comp study. Do we need, as a budget committee, to set aside money, or are we going to pull out from unassigned fund balance whenever that comes up? Should we need to dedicate some money for that purpose? It is, the work on that is not going to begin until after this budget season is over. So have to consider that until the 2021 budget. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, Landfill? Oh, we had no meeting. Thank you. All right. Well, Mr. Prophet's not here. We have a representative law enforcement. Anything? A nominating committee, Ms. Woody? I'll have the manager to the meeting. Quick one. Uh, rules and bylaws, Mr. Jenkins, and of course you spoke on that, Ms. Ms. Ward. That, that's all we got. Unless anybody has anything else they need to report, Dr. Baker, welfare, how about Ms. So, okay. Health and welfare, uh, we're in the packet of just a couple of items. I want to thank the mayor for stepping up to pull the volunteer fire departments, and others together for this discussion on how they can better work together with the department. So, we appreciate it. Um, the other item of note from Health and Welfare, uh, Attorney Harden was able to put together a uh, sick leave policy for the county uh, using the DTSU sick leave policy, what is currently used in the uh, Park County School System. Um, those have been distributed uh, by both by the uh, Health and Welfare Committee to each office owner and each director to review that draft, but also to ask employees if we instituted uh, a sick leave bank, would they be interested in participating? I also indicated to um, elected officials and department chairs or directors that I would be available to answer any questions by a department by uh, department to answer questions and explain what the benefit would be to the employees. So we, that has been distributed and we're waiting for something to come back. And we didn't, we asked specifically that, in, that uh, elected officials and department heads do not identify individuals who want to participate. Just give us a number on that, <laughs> please. All right. And thank you again for your hard work in lining these people up, support your group, multiple other brokers. I know you work really hard on that. Dr. Rinka and your committee, but uh, thank you. Need to be One more thing. I'll talk to you. That said, uh, so we're pretty much on schedule. We have seven, but we had problems. One, I'll talk to you. Uh, it's a big guy. We had to get to the hospital. They had about 12 days to try to get rid of him somehow with us. And we ended up sharing the expense to have it. Uh, Cremated, we had to go all the way to Greenville. He went 525 pounds. And uh, we didn't have no word to do it here. So, anyway, uh, we did work with that. That was one of the. We had to just talk about the office. Thank you. That, that, was, that was, I think, in the package as well. What pathology report there? We didn't get a chance. The mayor's referring to the pauper burials, not autopsies. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll find out. Um, that gets to county attorney reports. Yes, sir. Uh, as always, I'll submit a report that will be in the minutes. Uh, I would point out for litigation purposes, I, I told you all about a Charles Carr uh, 
uh, filed a lawsuit in Greenville Federal Court against the former chancellor, clerk and master, and I think 20 other people. Uh, in my opinion, that had no merit, and the court agreed, and that was dismissed. Uh, he can refile that if he chooses to, but I don't think it will have any merit again. But anyway, he can. But as of now, it's dismissed. Uh, Leader violation cases that we're still aggressively pursuing. There's three properties, owners that we got judgments on before, uh, who will be now uh, coming before the court for contempt on May 29th uh, because they did not comply with the court's order unless they do so before then. Uh, so those are coming up and then there's an additional eight cases that are still pending uh, that we're still pursuing alternate service on and those will be coming before the court. So we are moving forward on all of those as quickly as the, the law allows. Josh? Do you have the locations of the three, the three that are coming up for contempt? Possibly there. I don't have them with me. Uh, I know the ones on Highway 91 uh, in, in Stony Creek. Uh, I can't remember the other two, but uh, if you call me more, I can tell you. And those come from the planning department, like those citations that they issue from that, or where, where are these coming from? Yes, they're not really citations. The planning department and Mr. Jacob in, in Chris's office is the, the person in charge, basically, at the, at the initial level. Uh, they investigate these, they come to the planning commission, they work with the property owners, and then they'll recommend to forward to my office if they can't get compliance. Then we file uh, the appropriate documents in court and summons these folks in court. So it's it, it's a time uh, intensive process, and it, we're moving as fast as we can possibly move. And frankly, you know, more action's been taken in the last year than there has been in ten. Thank you for both offices working on that. But that's it. Anything else? Thank you, sir. <coughs> Commissioner comments. I was at a budget hearing where you all discussed the particularly funding the, the uh, Butler Fire Department and there was questions raised about how do they get their ISO rating and whatnot and I spoke with David Jones who's the fire chief at Westford County but Mayor help me with this I want to think that he's the leader of all the county fire departments I don't know what his official title is he's but he explained to me that the ISO is based partially on the number of volunteers they have. That's why that what the mayor said earlier about having this drive to get more volunteers is so important because our ISOs are based on the number of volunteers partially. The other thing he suggested was that we probably do need to have a contract with Butler on which calls they'll respond to, how many calls they'll respond to, et cetera, et cetera. He said he thought that would be very good. So I just want to share that with budget committee since I won't get to be here much time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we discussed that with, with this large funding then do have some kind of contract in place. Uh, we, we did have a contract uh, a few or three years ago and it had a map with, with areas where they would respond and I mean it really would just be renewing that contract if you all wanted to do that. Yeah, of course we'll take a look at it and see that yeah, we can do that. Sure. Anyone else? Dr. Rayka. Uh, just a point of note, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Elizabeth and Carter County will have their major fundraiser this Thursday at the Green Valley Steak and Burger. Tickets are still available. Uh, tables are still available. If, uh, if the tables are $1,000 to seat eight people, tickets are $100 each. Uh, I can give you the website and you can purchase them online. Uh, Bob Keesman, Voice of the Balls, is the main uh, keynote speaker. And I don't think I'm revealing too much, but uh, Jeff Goodrich, who, uh, as many of you know, at Elizabeth High School has been a choral mentor to young kids and others in this county for probably 40 years, will be honored at that event as a person of the year. She will sing a special award for the Boys and Girls Club. 630 is coming Thursday night at TV. Yeah, yeah, I was there last year. It's their biggest fundraiser yeah. of the year. And it's the main thing. And they always get up and raise a lot of money. Anyone else? Don't no, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Hill, second by Mr. Frazier. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.